So in many cases, both participation approaches and campaigning can have a role in achieving social change. It's important to be clear about the things you want to influence most. These are your priorities. You can't achieve everything at once. It's good to think about your short, medium and long term priorities for the changes your community needs. Don't start with the big stuff that's hardest to influence. It's good to tackle things where there's a better chance of short term success. It's fine to want to change the asylum system, but you might want to start by getting decision makers to talk to you about how to make the time in the system more bearable to begin with. The video helped us understand how power works. So to achieve change, you need to know who has power over the decisions that you need to influence. What can you achieve with your power to create that change? How can you work collectively to have power with others to achieve the change you need to see? And how do you build your power within the individuals and groups in your community to help make this happen? You need to make your case by gathering evidence to prove that what you want is needed for your community's well-being. You need to logically persuade decision makers of the value of your case for you and the people you represent, for agencies and policy makers themselves, and for the country as a whole to show how everyone benefits from the changes you seek. And by highlighting the reality of bad policy on human beings on its, or its wider negative impact on things like the economy, restricting the right to work for asylum seekers, for example, does both these things. Making sure that the impact of the issues is publicised to increase the pressure on decision makers to change things is very important. Sometimes it's appropriate to use or threaten to use the law, especially if people's rights are being undermined. And sometimes legal non-violent direct action like public demonstrations, marches or imaginative publicity stunts are a good idea. Make sure you always know what's legal and the impact on your members, especially those who are still asylum seekers, if you decide to take this type of action. This diagram shows how you might need to use participation opportunities and more public campaigning to make progress with your issues. Sometimes the chance to be part of shared decision making with those with power is an offer to you and your organisations in order to make things better. And other times this doesn't produce the change that you want and you might need to campaign more publicly to get the best from participation. It's not unusual for public campaigning to be required to get a seat at the table to participate in meaningful decision making. So often change needs to involve a combination of both approaches. To create the influence you need to achieve change, your groups need to work together with others who share your experiences or in networks of groups with similar views, in more formal coalitions with their own organisational form, like the Asylum Rights Campaign, or with other types of network who want to support your aims, like trade unions or churches. To create positive coalitions for change, it's good if you can hear the voices of supporters who might be Groups representing the views of asylum seekers and refugees themselves. Or of receiving communities, helping people to settle in Scotland. Or other local groups who just want to provide a welcome for their new neighbours. And those working locally to provide services people need. We also need to think about who needs to hear these voices and how to achieve this. It could include local people who might, might not agree with us, local services who are less responsive to our need, but we need them on side, those who plan the services we use, or the policy makers who affect the conditions our lives are lived under. Groups can do this by persuading politicians and service providers of the moral duty to help those people claiming asylum 
and ordinary people that they have nothing to fear and lots to gain from refugees joining their communities. Doing these things helps create the conditions for positive change and this has been a big part of refugee community development work in Scotland, like the campaign against Don Raids and the videos on the web pages earlier. So all your campaigning and participation activities help achieve change by raising both the moral and practical arguments in favour of change and using these to build positive relationships between refugees and other people to put pressure on politicians and decision makers to achieve change and ultimately improve laws and policies that affect people's lives. This work is not easy and it's almost always a struggle to make it work, but it is a way in this society of working to make sure that Scotland is a successful country where refugees are always welcome and make sure we address the other issues that affect refugee rights like discrimination and racism and to help the whole country by stabilising and growing Scotland's population built on solid relationships between new and existing local residents who are all new Scots.